How does a reishi mushroom like this turn into something like this brick? Researchers and companies are looking to turn fungi into innovative materials for buildings people live and work in. So what's propelling developers to swap out conventional building materials for fungi? And how do these new building materials compare to these more traditional ones? Let's explore why developers think that fungi are the future. It, we're in a situation similar to what was in the late 40s or the early 50s when people were just realizing what plastics would do. That's Andreas Mershon, a researcher at MIT who's using fungi as the building blocks of future houses. So the mushrooms predate insects and plants and single-celled organisms. They knew how to survive on this planet before we did, before we arrived. So they, they have a lot of teachers. I wanted to learn more about the mushroom blocks, so one of Andreas's collaborators, fungi architect Chris Marr, stopped by our office. So you sent me this brick right here. Uh, I was surprised at how like woody it smelled. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's in it? Well, it comes from wood, actually. This this one is a sample of a material that actually takes wood sawdust uh, from demolition, uh, construction and demolition waste. You can kind of hear that it's it, it has the consistency of wood. It has about the weight of wood. The sawdust is held together by mycelium, which is the root-like system of mushrooms. In bricks like this, the roots act almost like a glue. And they uh, grow in between the cells and actually hold on to them, bind them at a cellular level. The way that works is that the fungus is actually digesting key plant proteins to produce chitin. That's the main component in the exoskeletons of insects and crustaceans, like beetles, shrimp, and lobsters. And chitin is a pretty strong but flexible material. So you can think of that as almost like a true plastic in, in a sense. When these chitin-containing root-like systems grow in the wild, they are usually found underground. When it comes to harvesting mushrooms or making blocks, the process looks a little different. Those clear containers you see are filled with mycelium and a substrate, which is made from woody waste material. A substrate is basically what an organism, like a fungus, grows on. The project Chris and Andreas are working on in Namibia to build houses uses oyster mushrooms and mulch from an invasive bush. The type of mushroom and substrate that are used can change the quality of the end product. You can get anything from a very foamy material, like an insulation uh, or a packaging styrofoam type re replacement, or you can get something very strong like this. For bricks, the material needs to be compressed and then baked to dehydrate it. At the end of that process, Chris says that you end up with blocks that be traditional building materials on several key metrics. Among the most important is strength. We, we've made materials that are up to 26 megapascals, which is more than twice what a concrete block is um, in compression strength. So the compression strength means what exactly? Compression strength is the ability to take a downward pressure. Mushroom blocks can also be more resistant than concrete at withstanding impact, like from this sledgehammer. It's not the most scientific of tests, but it does give you an intuitive idea of just how sturdy mushroom blocks are. Plus, it replaces it with something that is insulative and can uh, also resist lateral loading, things like earthquakes without using steel. That's an important consideration as the world grapples with climate change. Concrete, steel, and aluminum account for like 23% of the world's carbon emissions. Plus, he says they're biodegradable and relatively lightweight. Andreas told me that these blocks are also fire retardant, which is a really important quality in building materials. I decided to put that to the test. Hmm, a little flame, there we go. So if I take it off, it should go off. As expected. The official test will be much more dramatic. They'll have to set a scale model of their fungi building on fire. Chris says that another benefit is food production. Um, so for every pound of that waste bush, we can actually grow a pound of mushrooms. The shrooms are growing in Namibia can also be harvested and sold as food, an important benefit given the food insecurity there. Before habitable mushroom buildings can come to fruition, the technology needs to be vetted further. That includes testing for waterproofing, bending strength, compression, and fire safety. The price of production will also have to come down. Right now, they're way more expensive than traditional bricks, which can cost less than a dollar. Researchers and companies working to make fungal materials mainstream are confident that that will happen. Regardless, these new materials are a good general reminder of just how versatile mushrooms are, thanks to millions of years of evolution.